Hey, we're out here checking this colony today. It went queenless a while back, and we introduced a caged queen, a mated queen. We're gonna see if they've accepted the queen. We was out here about a week ago, and we, we couldn't find no evidence of any eggs laying, so we're gonna give that a check and see what's going on with it. Um, hopefully they've accepted our queen. And there's um, some signs of eggs. There's a lot of bee bread in this colony. Uh, a lot of stored sugar syrup. I don't know if you can see or if the camera will pick it up, but that's what we like to see going into winter, but we don't have the bee power in this colony we're looking for. Um, not sure why this colony went queenless in the first place. Uh, swarm, it didn't queen itself or it could have, we could have accidentally killed her. There's a number of things that can cause it, but you can even smash a bee and uh, the alarm pheromone dropped down from that bee onto another, onto the queen, and I, they can ball the queen. So, a lot of different things can cause a colony to go queenless. So, just be mindful of that. Just because they go queenless, don't mean you killed her. I'm not seeing any signs of a, a laying queen in this colony. No eggs in the frames or in the cells. Plenty of stores. We just don't have enough bees. I, I want to see more bees than this going into the winter time. And I like to double check them as I go sometimes because I miss them a lot of times. A little bit of robin going on. We've had this colony open a little too long right now. So, and robin's one thing that can definitely knock your queen acceptance down tremendously. So, we want to get this colony closed up as soon as possible. Okay, I see a queen, but it's not the queen that we installed. It's a virgin queen right there. Um, not sure if you can see her on the camera, but we definitely have a queen. That's why they're a little calmer, but she's definitely not laying at the moment. And one of two things could happen. She could have been in here when we installed our queen and they decided not to accept her. Um, or there was a queen cell in here at the time that we didn't see and she hatched out. Now, if a virgin queen hatches out, and goes to battle with the mated queen, nine times out of ten, the virgin queen's gonna kill the, the, the mated queen. That's just the way it works. We're gonna close this colony up now. We do have a queen. We'll have to keep a good check on it. She's running out of time to get mated where we're at. I'm not seeing quite the drone population we used to have. And the weather's getting a lot wetter and temperatures are dropping and the wind's picking up, so. We'll have to keep a check on this colony and make sure she comes back mated. If not, we'll end up combined. We're done raising queens for the year, and it's getting harder to find queens. So if she doesn't come back mated, what we'll do is we'll combine this colony with another one. Hey, this hive's a little farther down. Um, it's, it's exhibiting parasitic mite syndrome. Um, so we're gonna check in today, see what's going on with it. The reason we say it's parasitic mite syndrome is because we did a mite check um, and we could actually see mites crawling on bees and crawling throughout the cell. We did a mite wash and it was extremely high. We treated this colony with Apa Guard along with the rest of the yard. It seems to work in all the other colonies except this one and another one. So we've dropped Apa Var strips in here to, to combat that. And we also hit it with oxalic acid because it was nearly broodless. Um, and we're hoping that that's turned it around. The only real treatment we know of for parasitic mite syndrome at the time is, uh, you know, knocking your mite levels down. Um, it's often consumed with par or European fowl brood. Um, which exhibits the same symptoms. 
And there is a treatment for that, and I'll discuss that later, but we're going to get in this colony and see what's going on with it. This just goes to show you, you know, all beekeeping isn't fun and games. I mean, there's, there's some stores on this frame, you know, a lot of pollen brought in, but still isn't a lot of bees to go in the winter with. So hopefully we've remedied our problem and the queen's, you know, kicked into the high gear and she's laying real good with all this natural pollen we have coming in. And if you can see, they're actually balling the queen right here. For some reason i'm not sure why they're balling this queen a lot of times with parasitic mite syndrome they will supersede a queen um and as you can see the dead larva down in here that is indications of parasitic mite syndrome yeah and if we can save this queen we will uh not not sure what's going on but I, i'd be curious to see why they're balling the queen um, they seem not to be balling her anymore but unless there's two queens no that's a bee um, I'm not sure what's going on guys uh, if you know let me know but a lot of times they will supersede a, a queen that is uh, in a colony with parasitic mite syndrome you'll see uh, supersedure cups if you can see here you've got some of the dead larva uh, and I'm not seeing any real healthy larva. There could be some, but I'm not really seeing it. Um, I don't really know what's going on with that queen being uh, bald like that. Um, could be that they're trying to supersede her to overcome the, the viruses. Um, it's hard to say. See, there, there is some good looking larva down in this colony and it's definitely better than it was but it's still not where it, where it needs to be for this time of year there's still not a lot of brood there's a bee with deformed wing virus um, and you know we've done everything we can do for this colony you know we've we treated it we treated it for mites the first treatment wasn't successful we dropped another treatment in immediately after um, so that just goes to show you what the viruses can do to a bee colony. There is a, a cell, but it's been in here. Um, there is a lot of eggs down in this this frame, but it's still not enough for this colony to make it through the winter. Um, it's, it's sad to see, but that's part of beekeeping. You know, there's. And it's almost making me wonder if part of these bees absconded and that's what's on the other side of that, that hive. I don't know that for sure. It, it's just kind of strange. Um, so what we're going to do, this colony here, I'm not going to spend any more resources on. I'm not going to attempt to save it. You know, I'm going to leave it alone. If they make a comeback, fine. If not, fine. I'm going to continue to treat them for mites because if... If this colony dies out and they are they're robbed out i don't want to transmit the mite load um, it's definitely not american fowl brood obviously but it is parasitic mite syndrome and it exhibits the the characteristics of european fowl brood And you want to stay on top of this if we and keep an eye on it because these frames are valuable you can reuse the frames no issues um, I would recommend freezing them but we'll definitely reuse the frames but if you don't the small high beetles will take over it you know if you're not on top of it so don't let your resources get wasted and you know stay on top of that you know just because we lost the bees doesn't mean we have to lose the equipment and the, the frames that are in the bees
I was wanting to see if they're after that queen again. You know, just kind of see if I can learn anything from it. But there's another bee with deformed wing virus. So I'm gonna count this cow colony as a loss. Financially, it's not worth our time to keep trying to nurse it along. You know, we made a good honey crop off of it. We've worked hard with it. We've tried to do the, everything that we know to do with it. And that's just the way it goes with beekeeping. Bees can handle, you know, a couple, a stressor, and then maybe another stressor. But you, you add two or three different stressors going on with the colony at the same time and they don't handle it really well. And that could be why they're trying to supersede that queen. You know, they could have, you know, with the viruses, the small hive beetles and all that stuff going on, it's just hard to say what, what's in the bee's mind. You know, we're not a bee. So that, that's where this colony stands. You know, I'm not excited about it by no means, but I'm not going to waste any more time and money with it. We're going to let them, we'll give them, a, you know, another day or so. I'm going to take this pollen substitute patty out. They don't need it. And all it'll do is attract small hive beetles. Um, We're gonna close this one up. We're gonna look at the one beside of it and kind of see what's going on with it. We're gonna check the one beside of it. It seems like these four were our problem colonies this year for some some reason. Not sure what reason that is. You know, hopefully these have you know got a better foothold going on than they did. And they they're eating their syrup. Uh, they're eating some of their patty, not a lot of it, but healthy bees eat guys so that's a good sign for us this one was also exhibiting parasitic mite syndrome and we did the same treatment regime with it um, we hit it with oxalic acid you know several rounds of that a lot of bee bread in the in the combs storing nectar I just want to see if that queen started laying again and what the larva look like. There's there's some cat brood and some hatching brood. I'm not seeing any deformed wing virus yet. The the brood pattern still isn't all that good, but in between down in the cells, there's <laughs> eggs filling in between, so that's a lot better sign. Um, the there's a lot of worker jelly down in the cells with the with the brood, so Get out of there. Same with this, they're, they're back filling and storing uh, nectar and sugar syrup. But there's also a lot of larva in there, looking a lot better than it was. Still not perfect by any means, but it's a lot better than, there was absolutely hardly zero brood. The brood that was in here was dead. And they were uncapping, so. I'm excited to see this colony may have a chance for survival. It's still not looking good. I wish we could requeen it as well, but this time of year we are out of queens and they're hard to come by. Yeah, there's a lot more brood in this colony. They're still not real organized, it don't seem. so. Organized bees seem to be a little better off. I've not seen the queen, but I do see signs of a queen. I see eggs and larvae. So we're gonna close this colony up. We're glad to see they're doing a little better. Hopefully they'll continue to do better. You know, I won't combine these colonies with anything else because of the viruses. And you know, they're not really healthy. So they'll either make it or they'll die out. Again, it's not a European fowl brood by any means. It's definitely mite related. For some reason, these 
these colonies didn't do so great, you know, with our mite treatment. So we dropped some apivar in them after we did the apigard. And we also hit them with oxalic acid while they were um, pretty broodless. So we hope you learned something from this video, guys. You know, beekeeping is not all um, sunshine and kisses. Sometimes you lose bees and there's nothing we can do. We treated these bees the same as we've done all our other bees. And, you know, unfortunately the viruses, you know, can sometimes overtake a colony. Hey guys, as you can see, the day's not the greatest day to be working bees. It's overcast, it's been raining, you know, they're, they're not real happy to see us. But unfortunately when you, you know, beekeeping's your business and you don't have the luxuries of, you know, only checking them on nice days. So we have to work bees no matter the weather. Um, those two colonies may not make it. I don't know what's going on. One was balling the queen. You know, we do have a queen in the other one, but it just goes to show you that sometimes, you know, no, no matter what your best efforts are, you're going to lose bees. Uh, I've been keeping bees 25 years and I've lost bees the whole time I've been keeping bees. So don't, don't think that, you know, it's your fault if you lose bees. Don't despair on it. Sometimes it's beyond your control. Um, I mentioned parasitic mite syndrome. Um, the best treatment for parasitic mite syndrome is reducing your mite load rapidly. Um, I also mentioned European fowl brood because uh, they exhibit the same exhibit the same uh, symptoms, and it looks a lot alike. European fowl brood can be, you know, treated with teramycin or tylen, which is tylosin. It's a powder, but you have to have a veterinary feed directed to get it. If you think you have it and you're not sure, go ahead and contact your bee inspector and have them come out. They'll probably identify parasitic mite syndrome and European fowl brood as European fowl brood, and that's okay. Let them go ahead and identify it and get you a veterinary feed directive to get you some teramycin. You can treat it with that if you choose to. You know, nothing says you have to treat it with anything. Um, do learn the difference between European fowl brood and American fowl brood, you know, because American fowl brood's a, a big deal, and you don't want that in your bee colonies um, or your apiary or your neighbors don't want it either. So. Be sure you know the difference, and if you don't, call your bee inspector. Uh, make sure that you're you're staying on top of your bees, guys, because so, after the honey flow, these bees were great. We produced a lot of honey off of these colonies, but you know, within several weeks after that, they started crashing, which is usually the case. Our highest mite loads here are in August and September. Um, we treated the end of July with Apigard. We gave them three rounds of 25 grams, and you know, it worked on most of them. We did our mite washes and most of them looked pretty good, but those those four didn't. So we're gonna chalk most of them up as a loss. We're not gonna count on them. If they do great, hey, you know, that, that's something to look forward to in the spring. If not, we'll salvage the equipment. If you like these videos, how about getting them, giving it a thumbs up, you know. If you've learned something, how about subscribing to the channel? We're gonna keep making these videos for you guys anytime we're out in the bee yard. Uh, thanks for watching and happy beekeeping. Came across this colony. I'm not sure what's going on with these. They've got their uh, rear ends up like they're giving, you know, sending out pheromones. I, first, I thought it was a swarm that had landed on top of a box, but now I'm not real sure. I don't see any queen up top. It's not acting like robin behavior. So I'm not real sure what's going on with this. If anybody knows, how about dropping a comment in the uh, comment section letting us know if you've seen this kind of activity on top of one of your colonies or not we hadn't been in this colony uh, so not real sure let us know thanks for watching